and welcome to Prudent Media. My name is Sachin Chatte and on this program we take a look at the latest releases. Today we will review two big Bollywood films. One of them is the new Alien film and of course the other one is a thriller called Blink Twice. First, let's take a look at Alien. The Alien franchise has been active for over four decades now, starting from 1979 and it has seen at least three big names associated with it as directors. Ridley Scott started it all as a director, followed by James Cameron, and then David Fincher made the third installment in 1992. The subsequent three films were underwhelming, even though Scott returned as a director for the last two films. Alien Romulus is the seventh film in the franchise, not counting the two crossover films, and brings back memories of the first two films in a good way. Directed by Fede Alvarez of Don't Breathe and the New Evil Dead fame, Romulus sticks to the basics without complicating the plot too much. It reminds us of the thrills and chills that Scott and Cameron gave us with the first two films and makes up for these elements that were solely missing in Prometheus and Covenant. Those last two films had too much talk and little action. But Alvarez is clear about the tone and the direction in which he wants to take Romulus. The mantra is to keep it simple. What I also liked about this film is the level it works on. For fans of the franchise, there are enough references from the past to connect the dots. But even if you haven't seen or don't remember the details of the previous films, Romulus also pretty much works as a standalone film. The action is largely set in one place, the Romulus, which is a giant space station. Before that, we are introduced to Rain, played by Kaylee Spaney, and often aboard a mining colony which is thousands of light years away from Earth. That colony is run by a corporation, the humans there are exploited for mining. It is also a place where the sun don't ever shine and Rain wants to get out of there. Officially, she can't, so she teams up with her friends who have a grand plan to escape from there. Along with her brother Andy, played by David Johnson, who is a programmed synthetic human, who is an android of sorts with human features, and led by her ex-boyfriend Tyler, played by Archie Renault, and a couple of other folks, they manage to get out of the colony and onboard the Romulus, which is abandoned. Now, there's no one aboard the space station, but that might just be what they needed as a ticket for a better life. There isn't a lot of camaraderie with the other onboard travelers, and you can expect things to get bad when the face huggers come. And naturally, they only get worse once they encounter a xenomorph. Alvarez and his co-writers navigate through the tough parts, like the convictions and the characters would have to undertake a long and arduous journey without knowing what is in store for them. Once they are on board the spaceship, the gears switch smoothly. What helps immensely is the production design and the special effects. They don't break any new ground, but whatever they do, they do it darn well. Take the gravity and anti-gravity scenes for instance. The liquid flowing out of a xenomorph is acidic enough to burn a hole in the space station and Rain and Andy have to navigate a fair bit of it floating in the air. Humans are susceptible to emotions and with a programmed android on board, the film also throws up the odd morality question. Is it okay to sacrifice a few people for the larger good? Well, your guess is as good as mine. The film is also aided by some quality performances, especially by the lead played by Kaylee Sweeney. Ripley would be proud of her. David Johnson also has a tricky role where he has to mix human emotions and yet play a droid and he does that admirably. In space, no one can hear you scream, but you sure can have a good time at the movies. I'm going to go with 4 out of 5 stars for the new Alien movie. And now let's take a look at the thriller Blink Twice. One could look at this film as one of those people on an island who have no clue what is going on kind of a thriller or a take on the rich and patriarchy. Either way, the result is a mixed bag because of the path that the film eventually takes. This is the debut feature of actress turned director Zoe Kravitz and to be sure, she certainly has a flair to be behind the camera. The writing though could have made the film something like Get Out but it falls short. One could also blame it on the editing because it takes a while before it cuts to the chase and then the chase is not very long. Kravitz though wants to punch and punch hard against the rich and those living a life in excess like the Jeffrey Epstein type. 
Now me aki plays Frida a waitress at those lavish celebrity parties. She idealizes tech billionaire Slater's king played by Channing Tatum who has his share of problems and has publicly apologized for his inappropriate behavior. King claims he has left the material world and bought an island where he spends his time. Frida meanwhile manages to get his attention at a party which she crashes with her best friend Jess played by Alia Shawka. And before you know it, they get an invitation to his island. They are joined there by a bunch of other men and women and it doesn't take long for the viewer to figure out that all is not well on the island. You can tell from the way the staff on the island behave and there is something sinister going on there. The island itself is a super luxurious place all right with lots of food, sunshine, alcohol and much more. It is paradise from the looks of it. For company they have Sara a contestant from a reality show Survivor, a rather quiet chap named Tom played by Hallie Joel Osment and two young ladies Camilla and Heather who are enjoying themselves on that trip. There is the odd thing that happens to Frida which makes her wonder but she just enjoys a gala time there. Now here is where the screenplay had to be tighter. We get it that everyone is having a good time but those scenes go on repeatedly till we eventually cut to the chase. Yes, there is a point to be made in that final act but again, the approach is of comedy and seriousness both, especially with those scenes involving Frida and Sara. The point about women being abused by men over and over again and being made to forget things is well made and the conclusion tries to turn the tide over. But if only it was made with the film being a little more compact, it would have been more effective. But Kravitz has served a dish that gives something to talk about. I'm going to go with 3 out of 5 stars for Zoe Kravitz's debut film, Blink Twice. Well, that's what I thought of the films that were released this week. Do let us know what you think. And I'll be back with you next week with more movie reviews. Till then, it's goodbye from me.